Welcome back to Bluegrass this beautiful August morning. I'm out with Woody, nice little pit bull mix here. And uh, what we're talking about today is practical versus impractical dog training. Okay, so yesterday I had a little German Shepherd puppy out May and I had this Labrador Retriever puppy out uh, Gunner. And we were walking around the course and I was talking about how to get more out of your training sessions with the puppy, how to adjust your expectations, how to adjust your reinforcement schedule and stuff. And I added a few elements to the course where we worked on like getting a kind of a nice sit or a nice down, okay? And some people asked me, they say, Stoney, why'd you add that? Well, it's not really something that I add. I just don't show everything that I do on YouTube uh, because we do a lot of stuff around here. And what I like to do is I like to like get a message out that the most important thing in dog training is getting out and doing interesting things, right? Okay, because if you'll get out with your dog, your dog's gonna learn the lesson it needs to learn uh, just by doing and we talk about that a lot on this channel learning by doing is the best kind of learning uh, but when it comes to like your formal dog training like guys try to focus on the practical first okay and so I've staged this uh, gas can here so that I could walk Woody and we could talk about practical versus impractical let's go up like in real life you know if I need a dog to walk on a slack lead, if I need a dog to stay somewhere because I'm busy, okay, then like I'm not going to be focused on the dog. Like so take this for instance, let's say I'm out and uh, Woody and I are, are traveling, we're going to do an adventure and somehow or another I end up running out of gas and I have to get out of my car and I have to walk down the road and I have to go get some gas. Okay. Well, while I'm walking down the road, my head's going to be up, my eyes are going to be out, I'm going to be looking for traffic, Woody's, you know, he's going to, his head's going to be on a swivel, he's going to be looking for things that are dangerous or fun or interesting or whatever. I'm not going to be walking down the side of the highway holding this and expecting Woody to look up at me and stare and prance and, and carry on, okay? And so I'm always uh, of the opinion that when you're doing your training, you should master uh, the most practical aspects of training first. And for me, you know, I don't need a lot out of a dog. I need a dog to come when you call it, to be still when you tell it, to have good manners from the neighbor's perspective, uh, to refrain from behavior that's dangerous, destructive, or rude, you know. And I need for, to be able to expect for those things to be in play regardless of where we are or what, we, what we're doing. Okay, so I'm not interested in my initial training for the dogs, not at all interested in doing things that are impractical, okay? So I get out and I work on developing a common vocabulary with the dogs. The vocabulary we use around here uh, is come, let's go hup, easy, wait, and stay because it covers all eventualities, okay? And then what I do after I start to, to embed that basic vocabulary is I get out and I make sure that I put the dog in a whole lot of situations where the physical conditions that we find ourselves in or the amount of dogs or the types of dogs that we're around has no impact on the dog's ability to respond promptly and reliably to uh, our vocabulary, okay? So I'm always thinking, you know, guys, I'm going to have you know, a rifle that I'm carrying around, a shotgun, a gas can, a chainsaw, you know, whatever it is. I'm always thinking about having a dog that can walk polite, politely beside me on a loose leash while they're young, okay, because really where we're going here is we're going to having a dog that'll walk politely beside you when you're busy, like whether or not, uh, you know, they have a leash on, right? Okay, and the, the key to remember is that good off-leash obedience uh, it comes from good on-leash obedience. Guys, it doesn't come from electric collars. It doesn't come from lots and lots of good food work. What it really comes from, if you want to just boil it all down, is taking your dog out and putting them in a ton of situations where they can learn how to kind of tag along. Because, you know, if we were out in the wild and I was a caveman and this was a cave dog, you know, like I'm out hunting. I'm out, like, looking for stuff. I'm out, like, like trying to avoid other cavemen that are trying to steal my cave. Or maybe I'm out trying to steal somebody else's cave. And the dog's just tagging along. Okay, so that's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about, make sure, right, to get your practical dog training done first, okay? Make the dog understand how to look at a situation and adapt to that situation in such a way that he, he makes himself easy to integrate into your lifestyle because the easier the dog is to integrate into your lifestyle, the more you're gonna do with him, the more that you do with him, then the better he's gonna mind in the long run, okay? So, uh, for any of you guys who only watched my video yesterday and you don't know about my normal program, uh, we do lots of things here, okay? But we always focus on the practical first, uh, and so don't get caught up, you know, worried about that stuff I showed you yesterday with the sits and the downs. It's, it's not important for your puppy training. It's nice to do, but not need to do. All right, I'll see y'all next week.